Hi, Dr. Renee. How, Hi. It's great to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Great. Given the you situation. look great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm so excited we could have coffee together today. I'm, yes. I'm really, I'm really excited to meet with you. I'm, I'm also doing well. I just got married. Um, as you know, I, I just got back from my honeymoon last night, and honeymooning during a, a pandemic is interesting. But uh, we, we made the most of it. So congratulations, and Amy. Thank you so much. I'm so Thank happy. you. So um, I'm really excited to talk to you because you've been doing a lot of speaking and a lot of writing around emotional intelligence. And mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, is right in the work that we do as, as coaches, but something I've really identified as a very important conversation to have right now, especially during the, the current situation. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited that you could take the time to be with us today. And I know your ideas and thoughts will really help a lot of leaders as they navigate these times. So what I'm curious, um, what has kind of driven you to want to start talking about emotional intelligence and how do you, how do you really even define it in the work that you do? Yeah. Uh, well, I would say first off the definition of emotional intelligence uh, to me is simply being able to perceive and understand and manage emotions and feelings, as well as judiciously and empathetically be in relationship, whether it's at work or your personal life, mm -hmm. uh, that's navigating that is uh, different than IQ. You know, IQ is more of like reasoning, analytical, mathematical, even logical side mm -hmm. of the skill set uh, for IQ. And there's so much research research after research that shows that the, the value of emotional intelligence Q comes from actually from childhood. Uh, I grew up in a home where feelings and emotions were not valued or validated. And I saw patterns of hurtful behavior at play, even within my family. And I remember asking myself this, what is the difference between somebody with high emotional intelligence and somebody with low emotional intelligence? Mm -hmm. And I remember asking myself the same question when I observed patterns of emotional intelligence mm -hmm. at work, because I actually, my, my passion, I say, I believe in emotional intelligence so much that I actually became a psychologist because right. I used to be in corporate America as a product marketing manager, FTE. And when I saw individuals who were struggling to manage their emotions under pressure, mm -hmm. uh, not giving and receiving feedback, yes. avoiding conflict, we've seen that, yeah. right? Amy, we see that a lot, a lot of our coaching. Uh, yes. And then mistrust and siloed work, uh, mm -hmm. as well as management at times not listening. Mm -hmm. And so the, this all fuels my, my desire for emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that about you, Renee, because, you know, I relate. That's why I started Human Point, you know, 13 years ago, because I believe that business success can only come through successful humans working together. Okay. It starts with the people and I think historically, we've put too much emphasis and too much time around productivity management and performance management. And it really needs to be focused on helping people become their very best. And I think I agree with your assessment that those are the, the areas that require higher emotional intelligence. So do you think emotional intelligence, it, you shared your own family experience and mm -hmm. And I can also relate to that as well. Um, can you share with me, do you believe that emotional intelligence is something that we're born with? Kind of like, you know, our eye color, hair color, uh, although I wasn't born with my hair color. Um, or is it something that we can develop over time? I am very encouraged to say that emotional <laughs> intelligence can absolutely be course corrected and developed uh, with, with time and effort. And really it starts with self-awareness. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think people who attend emotional intelligence trainings and things like that often are the ones that don't need it as much as the ones that don't <laughs> attend. And that's my opinion. And so uh, I believe that it starts with self-awareness. It is a rude awakening at times to mm -hmm. realize that all the crutches that we use, whether it's avoiding or the way we mm -hmm. manage our emotions, um, it actually doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not as effective as leaders as we hope and we think we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where feedback is really critical too. Yes. When we hear feedback from people about how we handle conflict or how we handle feed, uh, even giving feedback, mm -hmm. uh, how vague versus clear our communication yes. is, uh, it actually should change us. It should change us. Yes. And when we don't allow it to change us is where mm -hmm. we have issues. Mm -hmm. The receiving part. Yeah. Being able to take that feedback and turn it into action. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. I believe that a manager's number one coaching tool that they can use is feedback. And I, I believe, you that. know, even though we, we provide coaching as a business, I believe the best coach that you could ever have if it's done well is your direct manager because they're with you all the time and they can be mm -hmm. really, you know, on, on the spot, giving feedback that can really be transformative if they do it well. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to receive that feedback, well, that's encouraging to hear that we can get better um, and become more emotionally intelligent over time. And I love that you focused on self-awareness as that place, because if we're not willing to focus on ourselves mm -hmm. and our awareness, how are we going to be emotionally intelligent with other people? Absolutely. You know? Mm -hmm. So how have you, what has been your observation or your experience uh, with emotional intelligence behaviors like self-awareness and others' awareness and empathy in this virtual work environment that we're in? I see you're, you know, working from home today. I'm working from home today and our interactions are in this virtual environment now. So what have been some of your observations around how, how EQ plays out in this virtual work environment? Yeah. yeah. I think there's a big push for using virtual and video, et cetera, to take the place of in-person, especially in this world that we're in right now. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would have to say this research doesn't really support that. The research shows mm -hmm. that there, it's actually quite taxing to be on video mm -hmm. a lot. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to read cues. Um, there's an inhibition effect where people will maybe say things. You see this in political debates mm -hmm. on social media where people say yeah. things. They would never say in person, but they will say mm -hmm. it because it's kind of like you're behind the, the Interesting. crowd, <laughs> uh, you know, being anonymous yeah. in some way. And so um, and there's a lot of dynamics to that. Um, even, even what I mentioned about like, there's something called like, zoom fatigue uh, yeah. which is a new term around just you have it takes so much to tune um when you're virtual versus like if you're yeah. just meeting with somebody you're just passively taking in all these yeah. cues without having to like really pay attention and mm -hmm. so that being said i think i think there are things that managers can do and leaders can do to try to tune um w especially when i'm working with like executive comms or executive presence and visibility literally if you are doing an exec presentation to your leadership you should absolutely be putting on your video i'm not saying mm -hmm. put a video on every single time but it's gotta be mm -hmm. there's gotta be a video on yeah. that will actually show like your face because people mm -hmm. will not see you and we're already mm -hmm. not seen in the workplace there's no yeah there's no uh, banter back and forth in the hallways. Mm -hmm. And so it's so critical to get on camera as much as possible, uh, when, especially when you're presenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you bring up this interesting point of the fatigue factor, right? You know, I, I've said over the last several weeks that one hour on a virtual video meeting it depletes my energy like three or four hours in in-person meetings. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on, but the reality is, you know, is it really realistic for managers to expect their teams right now to be on back-to-back -back virtual video sessions for eight, 10 hours a day? You know, is that really a way? 
because yeah. you're, you know, I asked you about emotional intelligence and how this virtual environment impacts it. And you immediately went to fatigue. And I, I think that's fascinating that you went there because, you know, what does fatigue and burnout do to our ability to, to self-regulate and to display our emotional intelligence as leaders? You bring up a really important point because this is emotional intelligence, not in business as usual. Mm -hmm. This is emotional intelligence in a context of a post COVID world, having the courage to have conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And then also because of the economy, businesses yes. can't just survive. They've got to thrive and they've got to work better together to cross the finish line on ambitious common goals. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot there. Yes. Plus what you said about, about fatigue with the, with COVID, we are experiencing what's a collective trauma and loss. It really is a, a grief that we're mm -hmm. all experiencing collectively because mm -hmm. it's not the way they used to be. And there's so mm -hmm. much unpredictability and stress, really. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just co go out and, and have a coffee or yeah. do all these things. Now you have to think yeah. about cleanliness. You have to think about mm -hmm. hand sanitizer and <laughs> yes. all these. I mean, there's so many things you have to think about. <laughs> yes. um, and that's very taxing in its own. Its own. Um, but back to what I was saying about inclusion, when we think about being inclusive, we also have mm -hmm. to think about different types of personalities, mm -hmm. how they draw energy. Um, mm -hmm. so People are introverts and even extroverts mm -hmm. can be very taxed yes. by having to tune on a, on a video call yeah. nine to five. Mm -hmm. And so I think in order to be inclusive, my, my recommendation for managers is to let people choose whether or not they are on video or not and, mm -hmm. and encourage them, especially with their, yes. with their presenting or something like that, yeah. very critical points. Mm -hmm. They absolutely should be on video. That's my mm -hmm. point of view, but mm -hmm. not all day long every single meeting yes yes i i was in a, a meeting two weeks ago where a leader came everybody was on video except him and and he said you know i'm just not up for it today and it was completely accepted by the team and i just went along with my part that i was there to do but i really admired that senior manager who allowed that you know that space for this individual to to just be on the audio mm -hmm. that day mm -hmm. and i felt that they showed a tremendous amount of empathy uh versus criticism for him because yeah. he wasn't up to it like everybody else um mm -hmm. or calling him out because he was different mm -hmm. um they That's just great. gave him that space and and i you know people have been asking me amy what's the most important skill I can develop during this time? And I say, it's empathy. Empathy is the most uh, important skill um, to focus on because it, it forces us to put ourselves in somebody else's position and think about how, how they are doing emotionally as well versus just focusing on the work that needs to get done. You know, that productivity mindset manager versus the people-centric, empathetic, leader and i don't know what, what what you've been observing but i can tell you that leaders that lack this ability before covid oh. in my opinion have been more and more exposed post covid and they oh, are okay. even exponentially less effective in my oh. observations because the actual skills that they need to be successful are more in that eq category than the iq category that you absolutely that you explained yeah, I've seen so, the same thing, Amy. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to leaders that are leading their teams into this post-COVID um, new normal, um, or one of, like one of my friends likes to say, the new abnormal? Um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> True. What, what advice would you have for us um, that we can take away from, from this awareness of EQ and what we can work, how we can work on this as leaders? Well, we are in a day and age where emotional intelligence is really pretty prevalent in that everybody knows what that means for the most part, mm -hmm. a lot of resources. Um, one of my favorites is Brene Brown. She yeah. talks a lot about shame and, and resilience and, and uh, as well as authenticity. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily the term emotional intelligence, 
Yeah. Um, but she, she's certainly in that vein. Yeah. Um, there's mm -hmm. also somebody named Susan David, who is well known mm -hmm. for emotional agility. Uh, there, there's a lot of resources out there. Yes. And I, I would recommend people to consume as much as you can about that uh, during mm -hmm. this time, but also to put it through this lens. A lot of people, mm -hmm. they want quick tips. They want mm -hmm. tips and tricks and frameworks. They don't mm -hmm. want to really examine the root yes. issues for why they do what they do. Yeah. Because sometimes I'll see emotional intelligence, like HBR has this emotional intelligence series at the book, and mm -hmm. they collect a bunch of articles from all the top yeah. people. And there's some people that will say, hey, you just need to be civil. It's all about civility. <laughs> and, and for me, I don't agree because I see it like mm -hmm. a metaphor of an iceberg. You yeah, see it it's, a mouth yeah, above the, yeah. the water, right? And yeah. And then, and then, like, let's say somebody's not being helpful with conflict, right. or somebody's being really difficult. You see what's mm -hmm. above, but you don't see mm -hmm. what's underneath. You yeah. for yourself. But if you can examine the story you tell yourself, the way you think, maybe it's shame driven. Maybe it's insecurity. Yes. Maybe, yes. It's, um, maybe it's like you're controlling because you're actually afraid. You're mm -hmm. afraid you're not going to meet your numbers, and you're not going to yeah. keep your job or whatever it might yeah. be. I'm not good enough. Yeah. There's so all of these things. Fairness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that are actually quite vulnerable and mm -hmm. hard to face sometimes yourself. Mm -hmm. But, but if you can yeah. think deeper for why you struggle with boundaries, why you struggle with speaking mm -hmm. up, why you struggle with control, why you struggle with anger, if you get down to mm -hmm. the root issue, that is where the power is. Yes. Um, not, not just surface level behavior because that's yeah. not sustainable. In my yeah. opinion. It's not. You'll have to continuously monitor all of it or play whack-a-mole and Absolutely. try to change each thing because you're not really doing the work, yes. the work that needs to happen. Yeah. And I, I'm so inspired by you, Renee, because you are somebody that uh, has done the work and, and you're a great resource um, to talk about this work because you're, you've done it in your own life and you have helped you know, many, many, many people do this work. And so I just appreciate you sharing some of your insights today with us and, um, and encouraging us to maybe look deeper and maybe not in a critical way, but you know, why did I react that way in the meeting that I shouldn't have, but more in a curious way, like what is driving this behavior in me? And, and that's where that true transformation will occur. I, I totally agree. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. It's great to see you. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.